Tonight on Newswatch, finally free. After years of imprisonment, Iranian pastor Youssef Nadarkadi is out of jail. The latest on his release. Plus, some areas of New Orleans are still underwater almost two weeks after Hurricane Isaac. We'll go to Plaquemines Parish to see how they're coping. And the race to the White House meets the race on the track. Now one group is reaching out to NASCAR fans this election year. All this and more tonight on Newswatch. Well, it is what religious freedom advocates and Christians around the world have been hoping and praying for for years. Good evening, I'm Lee Webb. Good news indeed. And uh, in a surprise move, an Iranian court released in prison pastor Yusuf Nardakani early Saturday. He'd been facing a death sentence for the crime of apostasy. And while today he's home with his family, there is still fear for his safety. Ephraim Graham reports. This is the scene Christians around the world have been praying to see. Pastor Youssef Nadarkhani, alive, free, and embraced in the bosom of his family. It's a miracle three years in the making. An Iranian court sentenced Youssef to death for the crime of leaving Islam to become a Christian. He was given several chances to recant his Christian faith in exchange for his freedom. He refused every time. When asked to repent by the judges, Youssef stated, Repent means to return. What should I return to? To the blasphemy that I had before my faith in Christ? The judges replied, To the religion of your ancestors, Islam. Youssef replied, I cannot. The American Center for Law and Justice has been closely involved in efforts to release Pastor Nadarkhani and kept the case in the spotlight with a Twitter campaign that reached more than 3 million people a day and international outcry put pressure on the Iranian regime. Then this weekend came a startling decision. The judge acquitted him of apostasy, but convicted Youssef of evangelizing Muslims and sentenced him to time already served. Youssef is now free, but he's still in great danger. Karl Moeller, former president of Open Doors USA, told CBN News earlier this year he may be more at risk after he's released. In fact, uh, what we've seen in, in numerous cases over the last 30 years in Iran is someone may be uh, judicially acquitted or released uh, on a technicality, but then their lives are, are deeply also under threat. They can simply disappear or they can be tortured and arrested without any ju judicial process. So uh, by no means is uh, Pastor Youssef's uh, situation free and clear, even if he is acquitted of these charges. Ephraim Graham, CBN News. Susan Johnson Cook is the U.S. Ambassador for International Religious Freedom. That's a position created by Congress to speak out on religious freedom issues. And she joins us now to talk about this case. Ambassador, tell us about the role that the president, the State Department and Congress played in this case, if you will. Well, thank you so much for having me. We played a major aggressive role. Both the president, the Congress, and the United States Department of State have aggressively been speaking out for the release of Pastor Nadekani. So we welcome, certainly, the release of Pastor Nadekani and that he's able to now reunite with his family. As you know, it was almost three years, a long three years, that he's been imprisoned. He was sentenced for apostasy. Uh, now they have reduced... I, we, I, we understand reports are that on Saturday, they've been reduced to now proselytizing to to uh, Muslims. But we have been very aggressively working for his release. Um, on July 8th of this year, which was his thousandth day in prison, you know, a statement came from both the president and the State Department uh, to continue for his release. So we are rejoicing and we welcome that it has happened this weekend. We're, we're curious to know and to find out uh, what precipitated the release at this point. Do you, you find, Ambassador, that it Cases like this that even hard-nosed regimes like Iran don't like to be embarrassed by this kind of public exposure? Well, you know, we can't speak for Iran. What we can do is say that we've used sanctions. You know, there have, there's the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights that Iran signed on to, and they contradicted in those violations. You know, they did not adhere to what is in the agreements in the International Covenants. The U.S. then imposed sanctions on 13 uh, different individuals and also four uh, organizations for their violations of human rights, which included religious freedom. So we continue to press. You know, we can't speak for why Iran made the move when they did, but we certainly welcome that they did. And so three years is a long time out of someone's life. Um, and so now we're glad that he's reunited with his family. 
Ambassador, as you know, in Pakistan, the young girl accused of blasphemy against the Quran has been released, and an imam now is under arrest, accused of planting evidence. How do you view that action, and do you think it might lead to a revision of Pakistan's blasphemy laws? We are concerned about religious minorities all over the world. And so, certainly, we're focusing and pressing with the Pakistani government, with other governments who, you know, harass continuously religious minorities. What form does that take? What does pressing look like? Does it take the well, form of letters? Looks like sanctions. Okay. Uh, you know, as I indicated, you know, there are organizations and individuals that are uh, there uh, where there are pragmatic openings. We certainly work with uh, the government leaders. And where we don't have openings, we work multilaterally. And so we have partners internationally around the world. So pressing means that we continue to aggressively uh, call for the release of not only this particular prisoner, but for others around the world. And uh, so I will continue as ambassador to go visit those countries. We also have uh, times, opportunities where we speak with them via satellite. And there are also times that we meet with the embassy leaders here. You know, the UN General Assembly is coming up. There are bilaterals that happen there. So we continue to be actively engaged in the release and, the, and really the freedom for people everywhere to believe or not believe um, around the world. So that's what we do as the U.S. government. And I represent the Department of State and the president, and I advise them regularly. So we will continue to do that as we go forward. And we're so grateful that you had us on this opportunity. Thank you so much. Well, we're, we're grateful that you're here. Uh, Susan Johnson Cook is the U.S. Ambassador for International Religious Freedom. Thank you for filling us in on these cases. We appreciate it. You're welcome. And I I hope to see you soon. Thank you. That young Pakistani Christian Lee just mentioned is celebrating her release from jail. The 14-year-old was arrested after a mob of angry Muslims accused her of insulting Islam by burning a Quran. It's a crime punishable by life in prison. A judge released Rimsha Masih on roughly a $10,000 bail. We are in touch with her family. And her mother was very happy and she was delighted of listening the news. She was praying and she said, I was sure that justice will be done because my daughter was innocent. Masih's lawyers say they will push to have her case thrown out entirely. A Muslim cleric from her neighborhood was arrested last week for planning evidence to incriminate her. Witnesses say he did it to try and push Christians out of the neighborhood. In a quick turnaround, he now faces blasphemy charges of his own. Here at home, Congress convened today after a five-week vacation, but don't expect much to happen in the two months before the election. Big issues like extending the Bush-era tax cuts and cutting government spending probably won't be addressed. Even though analysts predict the economy will go off a fiscal cliff if that doesn't happen before the end of the year. One major task will be tackled, though, raising the debt limit to avoid a government shutdown. That measure is expected to pass both houses by next week. The 9-11 anniversary is tomorrow, and authorities are warning of the danger of a so-called lone wolf attack. So far, though, no warnings for law enforcement agencies across the country to be on high alert. A new bulletin cites a decline in 9-11 chatter by al-Qaeda. One reason is the successful targeting of al-Qaeda leaders. 23 of the top 30 al-Qaeda commanders are off the field, either dead or captured, in the last two, three to four years. So this has been you know, a pretty tough uh, series of months and years for al-Qaeda. Officials still fear, though, the possibility of an individual carrying out an attack on their own. Security officials say lone wolf terrorists can be harder to stop. They point to the man who tried to set off a bomb in Times Square. And on the eve of the 9-11 anniversary, some good news for those who believe they might have gotten sick in the aftermath of that attack. The government is expected to compensate rescue workers and people living near ground zero who may have gotten cancer as a result of the toxic rubble. When the towers fell, thousands of New York's finest, police, fire, EMTs and volunteers rushed to the scene where smoldering debris made it difficult to breathe. Many stayed to help for months. Now, more than a decade later, many people who helped, as well as those who lived near the site, argue that the toxins from Ground Zero gave them cancer. They knew the air wasn't safe, notwithstanding what the EPA was saying, but it didn't matter. They were there to help save whoever could be saved. At first, federal government officials refused to pay for medical bills, saying there was no proof. But new evidence has emerged that has changed all that. 
The feds are expected to announce that about 50 cancers will be covered by a nearly $3 billion fund set up for victim compensation. The first responders who were there for us, we're now going to be there for them. And we're going to compensate them. We're going to help provide treatment. And according to 2010 statistics, nearly 350 first responders from 9-11 had already died of cancer. Thousands of teachers walked off the job today in Chicago, the city's first school strike in 25 years. Months of negotiations have fallen through between the teachers union and the school district. Teachers claim salaries are not the biggest issue. The two sides are hung up, it seems, on things like health benefits and a new teacher evaluation system. The walkout poses a tricky situation, though, for pro-labor Mayor Rahm Emanuel. He says his main concern is keeping nearly 400,000 children safe and occupied. My team is available at any time now to pick up where we left off so we can get our kids back in the classroom. How dare you guys stop school in session? How dare you do that to our children? What are you thinking about? Not about them. Some 26,000 teachers and support staff were expected to join the picket lines. Meanwhile, some 140 schools opened their doors Monday to provide breakfast and lunch to children who rely on free meals. Coming up, cleaning up a community. How Operation Blessing is working to help residents of Plaquemines Parish after Hurricane Isaac tore through their town. A decorated veteran. I love my country and I love being free. Discovers his greatest battle. I kept thinking about my son. Is much closer to home. You are breaking the law. That is a lie and you know it. Now it's time to take a stand. The drama just continues to unfold here. And become a hero all over again. We fight for freedom. Last ounce of courage. Freedom. Starts Friday at Select Theaters. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now for a new pain-free meter. These new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Call now and Areva Medical will send you one of these new meters for free. And if you have Medicare, your testing supplies may also be covered. Areva makes it simple. They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs. And they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. With these new meters, there's no coding, you don't have to prick your fingers, and some of these meters even talk. Your blood glucose reading is 122. And if you call 1-800-284-9762, we will send you a free Betty Crocker diabetes cookbook filled with delicious recipes. Call Ariva today. You'd be glad you did. A decorated veteran. I love my country, and I love being free discovers his greatest battle. I kept thinking about my son. Is much closer to home. You are breaking the law. That is a lie and you know it. Now it's time to take a stand. The drama just continues to unfold here. And become a hero all over again. We fight for freedom. Last ounce of courage. Freedom. Starts Friday at select theaters. Excuse me. Residents of New York City are cleaning up today after two tornadoes touched down over the weekend. The first twister packed winds of 70 miles per hour. It ripped off roofs and tore down walls in Queens. And a few minutes later, the second tornado touched down in Brooklyn. This one with winds reaching 110 miles per hour. Look at that. Now is the cleanup. I started early this morning. I'm almost done. Um, but thank God we're okay. The tornadoes didn't cause any major injuries, thank goodness. Well, some areas of Louisiana are still underwater almost two weeks after Hurricane Isaac. Can you believe yeah, that? Yeah, it really is hard to believe. Relief crews, though, are working to pump water out of low-lying areas, and many residents are still without electricity. But as Mark Martin reports tonight, the challenges don't stop there. Evidence of Hurricane Isaac can still be found in Plaquemines Parish. Homes are damaged, trees are down, and high water remains. But officials say their biggest concern is the number of dead livestock. At least a thousand cows drowned in the 10 to 15 feet of flood water that preceded Isaac. 
if you don't get moving on it and all of a sudden these carcasses start getting very stenched to begin with, then you get your mosquitoes biting on here, and then they come and bite on a the human, then you're starting to transfer uh, blood fluids from one carcass to a human being, and then we're going to have an epidemic down here. Crews are beginning to clean up the dead animals, along with other debris and mud left as floodwaters recede. Louisiana Representative Chris Leopold says he hopes Plaquemines Parish will get funding to improve the levees in the area for the future. Money scarce, we all know that. We got the, the bottom line is, is this area and its importance cannot be measured in population, which census numbers dictate. It's got to be measured by the non-tangible, non-people related things that we provide to the whole country. Many areas in Louisiana are receiving federal aid. The Red Cross and other relief organizations are working to help with the cleanup and distribute food and other supplies. Mark Martin, CBN News. And one of those relief organizations is Operation Blessing, based here at CBN. They're still in Louisiana offering relief to residents, and many have lost everything, and OB is ministering to them through prayer, hot meals, and more. It's just such a sad situation. It's sad for the people of Plaquemine. Uh, they've had such a string of bad luck down here. First was Katrina, but only about half of the homes in this 18-mile stretch were flooded by Katrina. The other half weren't. There's areas on this road behind me that hadn't flooded in 300 years. So this was truly a historic storm. The damage is just absolutely devastating. And so far, Operation Blessing has received more than 600 requests from residents that need help just cleaning up the mess. Up next, NASCAR and politics. We'll head to a track where the most important race on fans' minds is the one for the White House. John Mapes is 42, mortgage, married, two great kids. He wants to protect his family with a $500,000 term life insurance policy. What do you think it'll cost him? $100 a month, 60, 40? Actually, none of the above. John can get a $500,000 policy from a highly rated insurer for under $25 a month. His secret, select quote. Select quote is impartial. They'll search the pick of insurers like these to give you a choice of your best prices. SelectQuote has great savings on term life for women, too. John's wife, Carrie, can get a $500,000 policy for under $16 a month. SelectQuote has helped make term life insurance affordable for hundreds of thousands of people since 1985. How about you? Just call this number or visit SelectQuote.com. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now for a new pain-free meter. These new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Call now and Areva Medical will send you one of these new meters for free. And if you have Medicare, your testing supplies may also be covered. Areva makes it simple. They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs. And they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. With these new meters, there's no coding. You don't have to prick your fingers. And some of these meters even talk. Your blood glucose reading is 122. And if you call 1-800-284-9762, we will send you a free Betty Crocker diabetes cookbook filled with delicious recipes. Call Ariva today. You'd be glad you did. For the first time in four months, the president has pulled ahead of Mitt Romney in fundraising. Obama brought in $114 million in August to Romney's $111 million. Still, the race to win votes remains tight as the candidates traded jabs at each other on the campaign trail over the weekend. The president blasted Romney's plan for Medicare, and Romney hit the president with a look at August's dismal job numbers. So here's the bottom line. Their plan bankrupts Medicare. Our plan strengthens Medicare. No, I think it is a jobless recovery, and it, it, if it's a recovery at all, it really doesn't look like a recovery. Romney also made headlines this weekend saying he'd like to keep parts of the president's health care law. 
I'm not getting rid of all of health care reform. Of course, there are a number of things that I like in health care reform that I'm going to put in place. One is to make sure that those with pre-existing conditions can get coverage. Well, when you think of the election, you probably don't think about NASCAR, but one group is doing just that. Yeah, NASCAR, of course, has one of the biggest followings of any sport in America, some 75 million fans. Mm -hmm. But around 15 million of them aren't registered to vote. Mark Martin traveled to the Richmond International Raceway to talk to those who were trying to rev up the vote. The American Majority Racing Cars speeds by in a qualifying round of the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Take a closer look and you'll see car number 81 is racing for much more than pole position. Its sponsor's mission is clearly stated on the side of the car. They want Americans to pledge to vote to keep America free. If you're concerned about where this country's headed, if you don't like where we are economically, if you don't like where you're at economically, if gas is too high, if you don't like the fact that you're 130,000 in debt per person, that's their share of the national debt, you have to do something. For founder Ned Ryan, doing something is getting involved in the election process and voting. Around one in five NASCAR fans is not registered to vote. Ryan says it's time to put Americans back in the driver's seat. And he says the goal of American majority racing is to fight against what he calls the triple threat of big government. Out of control spending, massive debt, and overtaxation. The American majority racing team believes education will make a difference at the ballot box. And they're not holding back on and off the track. Large banners drape their booth on vendors row like this one, which reads, 62% of Americans believe cutting taxes, not increased government spending, is the best way to create jobs. You know what the issues are, because we think that the issues are what drives people out. And when they know what the issues are, they're going to vote right and see a change in our nation. Everybody knows uh, that this country has struggled financially for the last uh, three or four years. And you know, even you know, us as drivers in NASCAR have seen it on the sponsorship side. The fans have seen it. You know, they go to less races, uh, less vacations. You know, everybody's understanding that there's a problem. American majority driver Jason Bowles believes basic freedoms are in jeopardy. There's some things that it should make people very, very nervous. The direction that we've gone and the, the speed that we've gotten there is, is not, a, not a good sign. American Majority hopes their pledge to vote drive will lead to limited government. Randy McDonald, the owner of McDonald Motorsports, which owns car number 81, agrees. As government gets bigger, then they make me as a small business owner do more stuff, and I'm spending time doing more stuff than running, you know, making my cars faster. Ryan says NASCAR fans are very patriotic and usually have more conservative values, so it makes sense to encourage them to make a trip to the ballot box. The American majority pledge to vote drive is not the first time NASCAR has navigated the world of politics. Last year, congressional Democrats spoke out against the U.S. military's sponsorship of race teams. Also in 2011, TeaParty.net sponsored a team in the NASCAR truck series. The United States, Michelle Obama and Dr. Jill Biden. As they Although some NASCAR fans booing First Lady Michelle Obama and Jill Biden at a race last fall made national headlines, those on the left have not shied away from reaching out to potential voters. Democratic Senator Mark Warner of Virginia even went as far as to put his name on a race car. And although he eventually decided against it, in 2008, then-Senator Barack Obama considered sponsoring a Sprint Cup Series race car. Fast forward to this presidential election year. How effective is the American majority pledge to vote drive? Politico.com reported NASCAR races are averaging around 4,000 signups for American majority. Rock the vote. Other people have been doing this on the left. Why can't we do it on the right and have fun doing it? And we are. The president of Rock the Vote, Heather Smith, told Politico.com that registering people to vote, no matter what the targeted demographic, benefits democracy, especially if young people are encouraged to head to the polls. 19-year-old rookie NASCAR driver Taylor Doggett gets the message. If it takes one person to make the difference, that's, that's really what it means. And, uh, every vote counts. A statement both sides of the political aisle believe as they race to Election Day. Mark Martin, CBN News, Richmond, Virginia. And if you have it registered to vote, you can find out how by going to our website, cbnnews.com. We'll be right back. cbnnews.com. 
News you want, when you want, 24-7. Stay current with up-to-the-minute stories. Ephraim Graham, CBN News, New York. I don't have to wait for my news anymore. CBNnews.com at your fingertips all day long. I only watch the stories I want to see. I find the story, I click on it, and boom, I'm there. Embassy in Washington, Eric Stackelbeck, CBN News. The source for your news, CBNnews.com. John Mapes is 42. Mortgage, married, two great kids. He wants to protect his family with a $500,000 term life insurance policy. What do you think it'll cost him? $100 a month? 60? 40? Actually, none of the above. John can get a $500,000 policy from a highly rated insurer for under $25 a month. His secret? Select Quote. Select Quote is impartial. They'll search the pick of insurers like these to give you a choice of your best prices. Select Quote has great savings on term life for women, too. John's wife, Carrie, can get a $500,000 policy for under $16 a month. Select Quote has helped make term life insurance affordable for hundreds of thousands of people since 1985. How about you? Just call this number or visit SelectQuote.com. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now for a new pain-free meter. These new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Call now and Areva Medical will send you one of these new meters for free. And if you have Medicare, your testing supplies may also be covered. Areva makes it simple. They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs. And they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. With these new meters, there's no coding, you don't have to prick your fingers, and some of these meters even talk. Your blood glucose reading is 122. And if you call 1-800-284-9762, we will send you a free Betty Crocker Diabetes Cookbook filled with delicious recipes. Call Areva today. You'd be glad you did. Well, it's the Secret Service agent's worst nightmare. Yeah, you, you saw a snippet of this earlier, but not only does one... Uh, excited Florida man give the president of the U.S. a big bear hug. He actually lifts the leader of the free world off his feet. Take a look. I got to give one of these to see. Look at that. Look at that. Man, I'm so excited. Man, are you a power lifter or what? I don't know. I was fired. Huh? <laughs> Good to see you, man. <laughs> Scott Van Duzer is the very enthusiastic owner of Big Apple Pizza in Fort Pierce, Florida. Not only is he a big supporter of the president and known for his food, he's also been known to bench press 350 pounds. Van Duzer said he didn't know the president was uh, coming to the restaurant until 40 minutes beforehand. He was asked if he was concerned about uh, getting in trouble with the Secret Service. He said now that the, the, the six foot three, 260 pound man said he was told it's just fine as long as he didn't carry the carry president away. away. Has, has that ever happened to President Obama the whole time he's been know. president? No way that anybody has picked him up like that. He I mean, was a he good really, sport about it. He really was. Yeah, uh, yeah. That was cute. Good night. Well, that's good. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>